In this video we examine how the Maxwell relations are useful in understanding the sensitivity of the enthalpy to easy to control variables like pressure. All right, so uh, let's uh, uh, try to think of a way to express enthalpy as a function of easy to control variables. So the temperature is an easy to control variable for sure, but then pressure is also something that we can con control in the lab uh, with relative ease. Now, if we study how the total derivatives of the enthalpy look like when expressed as a function of these two variables, then we find that you will have a partial derivative with respect to pressure, constant temperature, and you, you will have also a partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Right? And uh, in prior work, we uh, have already seen of, of what the meaning of these partial derivatives is. Right, so this one uh, is well known, but it's simply the heat capacity at constant pressure. Now for this one, uh, we also did a little bit of work uh, towards the end of the chapter of the first law, where we saw that this partial derivative was uh, the minus joule thompson coefficient multiplied by the heat capacity. All right, so uh, this is something that uh, can be obtained, and uh, those are all, all of those are uh, kind of known variables. Now, what, what, what we're going to do in this video is, is kind of revisit uh, these partial derivatives now with the help of the Maxwell relations to see if we can deepen our understanding of how the enthalpy changes with pressure. Okay, and that is useful for a variety of reasons. You okay, notice that every time that you're calculating a change in enthalpy uh, for a chemical reaction, for example, we, we're assuming standard conditions because the thermodynamic data that we have is taken at standard conditions and usually also 288 Kelvin, right? So we in principle really don't know how to calculate the change in enthalpy for a reaction if you were at pressure conditions that are different from one bar, right? So, so what the work that we're going to be doing here is going to help you understand how you will begin to think about changes in enthalpy when you change the pressure. All right, so let's then uh, try to go f uh, look for a Maxwell relation that is going to shed light into what this first derivative means. Okay, uh, we begin with the fundamental equation for uh, enthalpy that we derived in the Maxwell relation set, the re relation for enthalpy. Right, so that is T differential of S plus uh, volume differential of pressure. That's a st our starting point, and again, our goal is to find out how the enthalpy varies with pressure at constant temperature. So for that, the only thing that we have to do is just divide over differential of P and enforce constant temperature conditions, right? So we can uh, make this now a partial derivative with respect to pressure at constant temperature. And that means that this term also becomes a partial derivative of that entropy with respect to pressure. And again, we're uh, enforcing constant temperature conditions. All right, good. Uh, and now we have here this new partial derivative that emerges, and, and that's where the Maxwell relations are useful. But we can go to our uh, menu of Maxwell relations and see if we can identify this one. So that is the first derivative of the entropy with respect to pressure, and we can see it uh, that is in the uh, bottom Maxwell relation, the one obtained from the Gibbs energy, right? Has a negative sign, but it's exactly the same partial derivative with uh, constant temperature conditions, right? So we can uh, move ahead and try to replace that with something that is a little bit more useful than uh, this, because again, that, is, uh, that forces you to measure how the entropy change with pressure and that's really hard to do. There are just not very good measurements for entropy, right? So we would like, that, uh, we would like to recast that uh, sensitivity in something that is much easier, easier to measure. All right, so let's do, try to do that. This is going to be now uh, your minus partial derivative of V with respect to T. And notice that these var uh, variables are now uh, much easier to control volume, temperature, pressure, and then plus V. As a matter of fact, what we did in the video where we derived this Maxwell relation for the Gibbs energy is to recognize that this is simply V alpha, where that's the volume, and that is just simply the expansion coefficient. Right, so we can go uh, right ahead and say that from this Maxwell relation, we actually know 
that all that happens to be equal to V alpha. Right, and now your expression is very, very straightforward. Right, I'm going to try to go here one step lower. The way that the enthalpy changes with pressure at constant temperature is simply this expression volume, common factor of one minus T alpha. All right, where again, the, the simplicity is, is uh, this is in, 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 impossibly simple, right? You just have that, uh, you just need to know what the volume is, or the conditions that you're interested in, and then the temperature, which is really easy to measure, and that just depends on the expansion coefficient of the substances that are involved. Again, this is uh, another beautiful example for how Maxwell relations really help out uh, in, in uh, explaining or, or, or again, shedding light into interesting relations. Again, this is quite important to know. That's how the enthalpy changes with pressure. And again, this helps you answering questions as well. Suppose that we're trying to run a reaction now at the surface of Mars, where the pressure is no longer one bar, or maybe we're interested in chemistry uh, deep underwater. Maybe we're, we're trying to look at uh, the reactions of bacteria that live really, really deep underwater where the hydrostatic pressure is really high. Right, so your calculations for the enthalpies of reactions uh, that you normally calculate at one bar are meaningless at the surface of Mars or deep underwater. But this type of expression allows you to, uh, from the one bar standard data, go on and calculate how the change in enthalpy would be for uh, different conditions of pressure. Okay, in the next videos, we're going to continue with this survey of uh, the usefulness of macro relations to understand sensitivity of functions like the enthalpy, internal energy, and so forth, or easy-to-control variables like temperature, pressure, and volume.